Well, good evening, folks. It's late in the evening. I'm having a couple of beverages, and I once again find myself writing about how much I hate the Magpul MOE stock, which seems to come up in way too many gun reviews. Unfortunately, people keep using it, so I have to keep talking about it. But it inspired me to do something I've wanted to do for a while, which is to rank all of the Magpul stocks. So I went to the website TierMaker, which allows you to make your own custom tier list of things, although it turns out you need to have a Twitter account. So I had to make a Twitter account, and then I spent a bunch of time downloading pictures of Magpul stocks and setting this up. But it's done, a labor of love, and we are now ready to rank all of the Magpul stocks. Magpul makes a ton of different stocks, even just for the AR-15 or LR-308 platform. Also, they make the best stocks hands down. There are no other stocks that are better than them. I know some people like the BCM stock, but I can't for the life of me figure out why. I know some people like the B5 stock, but honestly, they're a little bit cheaply made and the rubber butt pads are a little too sticky, a little too grabby. So even the worst Magpul stock is still pretty darn good, but that doesn't mean I like all of them and they make so many, they can't all be hit. So we have our Magpul stock tier list. We have all of our Magpul stocks arrayed from left to right at the bottom of the list. And we're just gonna go for it, starting with the CTR. I love the CTR. It is the perfect AR stock because it's affordable and it's set up out of the box to accept a sling attachment in a good position. Also, it has the little uh, secondary clamp mechanism that keeps it from moving or keeps it from rattling as much. I'm gonna put that in the S tier. It's my favorite stock ever. Uh, some people complain that the CTR stock rattles. I don't think that's that big of a deal because it has that little secondary latch and it's. I just can guarantee you it's not gonna be the loudest part on your gun. So yeah, who cares? Magpul CTR stock, the best stock. This is what I say every single time this subject comes up because people try to cheap out and use the MOE stock, which I can see there in the list. Let's go straight for that. The MOE stock is a D tier stock. It is cheaper than a CTR, but it doesn't have a sling QD swivel. It doesn't have the secondary latching mechanism, uh, and it's not really that much cheaper. So MOE stock, terrible. All right, well, that was the easy part. Now we get into the more complicated stuff. The Magpul PRS stock, this one is kind of a very niche application stock. It has a whole bunch of different adjustment, but it is very expensive. It's very heavy. I'm not really sure how useful all those adjustments are on an AR-15, like raising up the cheek height a whole bunch. Not very useful because you don't need to raise the cheek height very much on a flat top AR unless you have a ridiculously tall scope mount, and that's not the sort of thing that you probably are doing on a PRS stock. So uh, the PRS Gen 3 stock, not very good, at least from my opinion. I, I put that, I rank that pretty low. The PRS light stock, uh, I was kind of hyped about that when I was looking forward to that, but mostly it was because it's supposed to be lighter weight than the PRS Gen 3, which is, it is true. But Magpul has a weird habit of listing the weights of their stocks, sometimes with a buffer tube and sometimes without. And they, they listed the weight of the PRS light and it was so heavy that I thought, man, that must be with the buffer tube included. There's no way it's actually that fucking heavy. And it took them like a year and a half to actually release the PRS light after it was announced. It turns out it is that heavy. Uh, it is pretty comfortable. It's nice and rigid. It's got less like internal mechanisms and bullshit than the PRS uh, full-size stock. So I do kind of like the PRS light. I especially like that uh, the big flat spot on the bottom there that allows it to really easily ride on a rear bag, which is nice for shooting but I find that the cheek rest piece is too far back because I mean, it's an AR, it has to have room to clear the charging handle. So they have to move the cheek rest back and then it's too far back for most scopes, unless you're gonna set up a, a scope mounted really far back, but then it's gonna be totally different than your other rifles because most of the time you're not gonna wanna mount a scope super far back just so you can use your PRS light stock. It's a total, total waste of time. There are better ways to get a good cheek weld. Uh, I would rather just have a normal fixed stock or a normal adjustable stock with a little extra cheek weld. So better than the PRS, but still not my favorite. Up next, the SLM stock. Oh, this one sucks. Super hardcore. The SLM stock is a truncated version of the SLK stock, so it's like a shorter PDW stock, but it only actually works on PDW length buffer tubes or on the uh, the little like fake dummy buffer tube that folds to the side on like uh, SIG MCXs or something like that. The SIG MCX Spear, I believe, uses an SLM out of the box. And it's, you know, 
it's shorter. The, the stock piece itself is shorter than an SLK or an SLS stock, or an SL stock, rather. But it doesn't, it doesn't collapse any farther on a normal buffer tube because the limit is still the length of the buffer tube. So unless you have a very specific setup, it's not actually going to do anything for you, and that's not made very clear on the website. So the stock has a niche application, but because the way that they kind of are not super upfront about how useless it is for most people, that kind of that kind of knocks it down a peg, in my opinion, gives it a slight pegging. Um, but also just the fact that uh, if you're going to set up like a, an AR with one of those PDW buffer tubes, it's that that kit is probably going to come with a PDW stock anyway. Uh, so. Why replace it with a Magpul SLM? Also, like with the SLK stock, it doesn't have a, uh, a really good sling attachment point. Uh, it's really intended for folding stock guns, and you're not going to put a sling on the stock of a folding stock gun because then the, the sling gets all fucked up when you fold it. So, yeah, SLM stock, pretty stupid. SLK stock, slightly better, but still pretty stupid. No uh, easy sling attachment points. Other than that, I mean, I guess it's fine but it's really only ever so slightly lighter than an SL stock. So don't really see the point of the SLK stock most of the time, unless you're really just trying to shave off just a little bit of overall girth and a, just a tiny amount of weight. But then again, there are other stocks that already do that stuff. So SLK stock, not really my preferred. SL stock though, really good stock. SL stock, not as great as the CTR stock, uh, I think the CTR is still overall just a better stock. It's also cheaper, it's lighter. The SL stock, though, does have a better cheek weld, so uh, if you want to have a scoped rifle, then maybe the SL is a little bit better because you're more comfortable cheek weld. Also, if you're using a really tall optics riser, then having a little bit, you know, a little bit wider of a cheek contact point on the stock helps when you have to crane your head up a little bit higher to get behind the optic. Also, the SL stock does weigh a little bit more so if you have a very nose heavy gun like a like a big gun with a suppressor on it or like a big laser module then sometimes adding a little bit of weight to the rear helps the gun balance better it makes it feel better even if technically you're actually just adding weight overall man i knew i was opinionated about magpul stocks i didn't actually realize i was this opinionated about them uh acs stock the ACS stock is one of Magpul's many storage type stocks. There are two versions of it, the ACS and the ACSL. The ACS has, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this a D. I fucking hate this thing. The ACS has a storage compartment down on the bottom for like tools, and it also has battery tubes along the cheek rest area. The ACSL is a little bit lighter. It omits the battery tubes, but it's still just stupid. Uh, they're expensive. They're relatively heavy. They look like shit. The stupid tool storage in the back of the stock is just awful. And honestly, I hate battery storage in stocks. I think that's just, I ah, just hate it. That'll cause some rattle right there, man, putting batteries in your stock. Yeah, I hate storage stocks. I don't know. I guess I'm just biased in that way. So yeah, fuck that shit. It's not like it's not like it's storage for anything interesting. It's like storage for tiny tools that you don't need to have on your gun or storage for batteries, but I don't know, man. You can you can have batteries elsewhere. If, you, if you're trapped in the fucking wilderness with just the batteries you have on your gun, I feel like you're going to die of dehydration before you kill the battery on your Surefire, but maybe that's just me. Up next, the MOE rifle stock. Pretty good, pretty good. I guess I'll give that a, I'll give that a B. The, uh, the MOE rifle stock is... You know, it's pretty nice. Uh, one of the things that holds it back is that, like a lot of other Magpul stocks, it doesn't actually come with a sling swivel uh, QD mount. You have to buy it separately. And a lot of the pictures on the website don't make it super obvious. So you get the stock, and then you realize you have to go buy another piece. And that means you got to place another order, and that means you're going to be assessed a shipping charge. So it's only like a $12 add-on piece, but then you got to pay shipping again. So, yeah, that's an annoying habit. I wish Magpul would stop doing that just ship the fucking thing with the sling QD. Other than that, the MOE rifle stock is good. It has a storage compartment that's more like an A2, so you could actually put like a cleaning kit or something in there if you wanted, but still not all that uh, super interesting. It's just that, you know, there are not that many options out there for a stock that goes onto like an A2 length rifle buffer tube. A lot of the ones that are out there are like cheapo knockoffs. Um, so getting a quality rifle stock 
not that easy. Also, once you do add the sling swivel QD, that's way better than having, you know, like an A2 style stock where sling attachment really sucks. So, annoying you have to add the sling QD, but it's nice that there is that option. Uh, next, the STR stock, another storage stock. Uh, better than the ACS stock, but really not by much. The I can't remember if it's the STR or the ACS, one of those things. Actually, is yeah, this is one of the reasons the STR is better than the ACS. The STR, I believe, does come with a sling swivel uh, QD cup already in it, similar to the CTR, plus it's got storage. The ACS, I think the ACS includes an add-on sling swivel, like it's in the box, so at least they're not making you buy it separately but it sticks out a lot it's all it's all fucking weird it looks like shit so i would prefer the sling swivel on the str but at the end of the day it's still a storage stock uh i don't want to stick fucking batteries in there so just it's the old hop bias acting up again fuck that shit the moe fixed carbine ah uh, it's a great stock i love that one uh the MOE fixed carbine stock is a little bit shorter than I like my stocks most of the time. So I have a rifle with an MOE fixed carbine stock and I have the, the thicker uh, recoil pad on it just to give it a tiny bit more length of pull. But I do like the rigidity and the simplicity of it. Um, also, they look cool. The main thing, again, keeping it from uh, from being a better stock, is that like with the MOE rifle stock, it doesn't come with a sling QD. You got to buy it separately. You got to install it yourself. That is kind of a, a kick in the ass. But MOE fixed carbine, great stock. Also, it does have just a little bit of a, uh, a shelf on the bottom that makes it nice for resting on a rear bag if that's what you're into. So yeah, I like it, especially, uh, for example, on a rifle with like like an ACOG or something where your length of pull is essentially going to be limited because you got to get your face up on the gun anyway. Fuck it, yeah. MOE fixed carbine, cool stock. And it looks good. The SLS is the storage version of the SL. That one is... God, I can't... I cannot in good conscience give a storage stock better than a C rating. Uh, so the STR is a storage version of the CTR. The SLS is a storage version of the SL. The ACS is like an adjustable version of this fucking the UBR, which we haven't gotten to yet. I'm saving the best or the worst for last, I guess. Uh, yeah, the SLS stock, I mean, it's got the, the nice wide sloping cheek rest shape of most of these storage stocks or the SL stock, but just with battery storage in it. I just don't care, man. I just don't. I don't care about battery storage. So, just get the SL, put your batteries somewhere else. And last, the UBR stock. The UBR stock. I think some people don't like it because it's expensive, but that the price isn't actually kind of the worst thing about it. The thing about the UBR stock is that it has a proprietary buffer tube, but it comes with it. So yes, it costs more than most other stocks, but it also comes with some of other components, so you don't have to buy them separately. So you kind of got to factor that in. But at the end of the day, the UBR stock is, it's just a fucking, it's Reddit stock, man. It is, it's hype beast stuff. Uh, I think people mostly like it because it looks cool when it extends, because the bottom piece extends and the top piece stays rigid. I don't find that particularly comfortable. It just gives you a big gap at the back end for stuff to get bound up in, like your sling or your fucking face or like pieces, pieces of your like plate carrier, your web gear or whatever. It's also got that stupid uh, storage compartment in the back for putting tools in which most people don't put anything in there so what you do is you take the storage core out so it has like a hole in it it makes the stock look cooler but then man like why did you fucking buy that stock and people will say oh it passed some like socom test for rigidity and durability yeah man okay because people are fucking breaking ar stocks left and right all the time right that just seems completely nonsensical to me so yeah fuck that fuck the ubr stock well, there you have it. All of the Magpul stocks ranked according to me. Uh, and I guess if we had to put some other stocks in here, like the uh, the B5 Systems Bravo stock, I had to, that'd come in at a solid B. The uh, BCM stock would come in at a, at a C at best. I don't think anybody else even makes a stock worth fucking talking about. So that's it. That's stocks, man. Uh, I think I have to give the usual disclaimer that this video does not constitute investment advice, but I think you probably already knew that. All right, goodbye.